and they can hear us when we go live. Okay, I'll be good. Try and behave herself with the boss <laughs> man here. <laughs> I got to put that up. Joshua will be on here in just a moment. He's finishing something up. Thirty seconds, plenty of time. Yep, there plenty we go. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, okay. Good. Kind of like the OA team. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it was is. worrying me. I'm like, Jim, I cannot get on here. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. You will not believe how glad we are to be here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sitting here and Charlene is, uh, you know, I'm wondering where she's at. And she texts me and says, you couldn't find the link. So I sent it to her again. And uh, then she says, I can't get on. And, you know, and you were starting to, you know, get concerned there, weren't you? I had a good few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but we made it. See, it all came together. It's always oh, fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, it really is. And we're so glad that we're going to have Joshua uh, T. Berglund with us today. He is the producer here at the network on E360 TV. And before the show, Charlene told me to make sure I behave myself. That's so right. I now I'm, I'll try my best, Charlene. You need to. Be, you got to be good today. Today. <laughs> I mean to tell you, uh, we, we really have a lot of fun here, and I've already got a couple of comments here. Let's see. We ain't even got started here. Oh, hell, Helene Wilson says hello to both of us, to you well, and hello. to me. Hello, Helene. So happy to see you. That's a good friend of mine. Yeah, thank you for, you know, <laughs> comments there. Hello, Helene. Thanks for joining the show. We got to take care of a little business here, and we'll be back right after this brief message. And here we go. I think you might know this lady here. Hi, and welcome to the Messages of Inspiration and Hope show that's proudly sponsored by the 6-Minute Webinar. Today, we have some exciting and very interesting guests, real people just like you and me. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the show. Now, here's Jim. You know, you do a good job of that. You know, not only are you the uh, honorary <laughs> host here on E360 TV, you do the commercials, you you work for an airline, and uh, you also, yes, Let's talk about this for a few moments, because this is very, very important for folks out there. And I want to make sure that we mention this. I want you to share a little bit about Hannah, the healing acres never again. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Great. Um, healing Acres Never Again is my nonprofit organization. We do call it Hannah for short. We help reach out and help people that have been through any kind of sexual trauma from incest to rape to domestic violence to abortion. So mm -hmm. it's uh, stemmed from my own life experiences. So I do like to reach out. I like to help people get to that next level of healing. So if you need help or you know somebody who needs help in any of those sexual trauma areas, please reach out to Hannah. It's healingacresneveragain.org. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I remember when I first, uh, when we were first doing the original series on Zoom and, and Facebook Live and all, we did a call for speakers and uh, Charlene was uh, came on one day and I, I had never, you know, met her before then. And uh, she uh, she started telling about Hannah and her sh started sharing her ex life experience. And I'm going like, oh, my goodness gracious. You know, the thing that got me was how the trauma and things that she went through. But when you look at Charlene, you see a, a beautiful lady with a beautiful smile. But most importantly, I noticed the light in her eyes, <laughs> the happiness, the joy in inside. And I'm thinking, wow. This lady is is something extra special, and mm -hmm. let me put your uh, let me put your um, I, I'm I'm slow today. I'm I'm slow on all fronts today. 
I texted a friend earlier today and I says, I got up early, you know, I got up this morning and I just hadn't felt good all day. I wasn't sick or anything like that. I just felt like, you know, whoa, whoa. You know, if you get one of those days you feel like whoa, whoa, whoa. It's whoa. all that wood cutting you did yesterday, I think. Oh no, that that <laughs> that doesn't bother me. That's good for me. But one of those days you feel like you want to check your shoes because you feel like you put your shoes on backwards and you're walking uphill all day. <laughs> <laughs> But our guest today, uh, Joshua, he'll be here shortly. He's finishing up. Like I say, he is the producer here on the E360 TV network. He's the producer of the network. And uh, he just, I just spoke with him on the phone there, and he says he'll be there in just as quick as he can. So we're, we're certainly thankful of that. But Charlene, you said something that really uh, kind of got me there, huh? About you knowing him. Would you share that with us, please? Well, I noticed on Facebook, he's connected to you and he's connected to a friend of mine, Brett Scott. And Brett Scott, I'm um, an author and I wrote an anthology book called I Fly. And Brett Scott is also has a chapter in that book. So I noticed that he was also connected to some friends of mine. So that's very interesting. I can't wait to, to see him. So I do know him. I know of him. So I can't wait to <laughs> <Yeah>. see him. <laughs> yeah, I've got to send him something here. He just he's on the phone to me right now. So but yeah, Joshua is um, about two weeks ago. Uh, let me get this here on there. Oh, goodness. Me and my big thumb on a phone doesn't work too well. I apologize <laughs> for that. But Joshua, I called up Aaron Hymas, and I told Aaron, I says, uh, you know, I need a guest, you know, and he said, well, he says, uh, let me recommend Joshua. I said, okay. And uh, he said, uh, I asked him, who is Joshua? And he said, well, he's one of my, there he is, here he is, he's here. There he is. There he is. Hey, <laughs> Joshua, I got to tell you, I'm so glad you're here because Charlene was telling everybody she, that, <laughs> what she knew about you, and she was giggling the whole time. And I didn't it was know, all know good, you, Joshua. I didn't, know you, I didn't know you guys were connected, huh? We, I, I right when you tagged us together, I, I reached out and was like, yeah. well, we might as well be friends if we're going to hang out on air. That's yeah. right. I realized that you're also connected to Brett Scott, who is a co-author with me in one of my books. So I oh, really cool. talked a little bit about that. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I've only met him virtually, but uh, he's a good dude for sure. Yes, he, he really is. <laughs> Very cool. I, I went to your Zoom link, Jim. I was oh, did looking you? for the link through Messenger, and I was like, Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the Zoom link. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, like I was telling a buddy of mine, he was asking, when we started to show out, you might recall, we were on, uh, we started out during the pandemic and we started out on Zoom and Facebook Live. And then I told him we got invited through Tamara Hunter and, and Aaron, they invited us to come to E360 TV. And he asked me, he said, well, what's the difference? And I said, well, it's kind of like being at the circus and you go from performing at the side show to under the big top. <laughs> I, I, I had to put it in country boy language. He would understand. You see, I, that's where I, that's where I was coming from. I can dig that. And my <laughs> website, well, the, you, that's one of my websites, but okay. I, I uh, have livemonoworldwide.org. That's my main website. Okay. But that one works too. If you want to use that. Okay. I know good to see you. Um, thank you, thank you for the opportunity to be here. I, I really am. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. We appreciate it too, because I was just sharing with the audience before you got here that uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, something like that, two weeks, three weeks ago, uh, we needed to have a you know guest on the show, and I contacted Aaron. He says, "Hey, just get just put Joshua on there." And I says, "Okay, tell me about him." I said, "Well, he's my he works with us here. He's the producer and all that. So you know here." And Charlene, before the show, told me, since you're the producer of the network, I got to behave myself. Can you That's right. That? No, actually, I encourage bad behavior. <laughs> we're, we're, we're actually doing an event right now. So mm -hmm. as soon as I jump off here, I'm going back to the recording for an event that we're producing with E360. Right. And it's like I'm I'm probably known to cause more mayhem than anybody. So it's you're <laughs> good. Act crazy, act wild. 
uh, in my book, that makes you great. So, oh yeah, because I tell people, you know, what people really tune in for is the infotainment. And yeah. that's to, you know, provide people with good information, but also, you know, with all the stuff that's going on in the world today and all the meanness and everything is being vomited on people. Yeah. You know, I, I tell people we don't have to drink from those dirty waters. We can drink from our own well, a clean spring and ignore them because they're, they're really when you think about it, you should feel sorry for them because they're ignorant and undereducated <laughs> to treat people like that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Ignorant and, is the right word, yeah. Yeah, sure. it, and undereducated goes along with it, too. <laughs> you know, Joshua, you, you've also got a, a show here, and you, I want you to share with, with the people there while I go get that other website. How, which, what a great guy you are. We all know what a great guy you are, but yeah, uh, don't hit right on yourself. Great guy. <laughs> I, I am not a great guy at all. Um, but I do have a heart for people. And yes. that I, makes you great. I, I, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm making up for a lot of years of destruction, you know? So it's, uh, I, I'm, bl I, I, it's so cool though. Cause I, I get to see God's miracles every day and not just with my own life, but through other people and getting to see people that have been left behind and cast aside and shunned from society and to be able to play any part in in their life that allows them to step get back on the track that they were intended to be on and go fulfill their god-given purpose their destiny okay. that gets me really excited and to be in the position that i am having a nonprofit media organization and getting to teach and equip people how to create their own tv shows radio shows podcasts launch music careers uh, launch a brand or product, like to be able to, you know, to just to get my hands on there just a little bit and to be able to help. It's such a cool experience because my hands did so much bad in the, back <laughs> in the day. And now it's, it's so cool. And it's the, the, the thing that the people that we get to serve every day and the people we get to work with, and this is outside of the network, uh, E360 also, uh, but even within the network, Getting to see people that had these lives where they were just left for dead and they had no hope, no passion. They didn't know which way was left, much less right. And mm -hmm. to see them go, oh, I get it now. <laughs> and to know that it's never too late to do what you were created to do is is so cool to get to see to get to get to see that play out every day is amazing. I love that. That's awesome. That's not a job. That's an adventure. I mean, it's an adventure. How yes. wonderful. <laughs> You're very lucky. Very lucky to be seated in that position. I'm blessed. <laughs> I work. Hey, listen, I, I did the work. And I, uh, yeah. I, one thing I will tell you that there is any overnight success. And we've, I think we've all at some point in our life tried to, you know, we're hoping for that overnight success, but it mm -hmm. does not work that way. And here's the, here's the truth. You don't want to be an overnight success yeah, because you right. don't have the maturity to handle the bull crap that comes with success. I remember when I got it came into um, a couple million dollars and from selling my healthcare company, and that was the dumbest, like not dumb. I, I learned pretty quickly how immature I was. God was mm. not a good steward. I knew nothing about being a good steward of of what I had and what I owned or what I'd been blessed with. And I took it all for granted. And guess what? It was taken away. All right. I shouldn't even say it was taken away. It was lost. And <laughs> I'm the one that lost it. It was a, le it was <laughs> it a was lesson. My decisions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, you're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at that time going into it was my second round. I'd already lost everything once and coming back into it. I was like, Oh, well, I can make this money just like that. I can do whatever I want. I had this amazing business. And it was amazing how to watch millions of dollars just disappear within eight months. Going to LA, have all this money in the bank. My 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 skincare line is killing it. We're about to go public. Life is good. I'm sponsoring every major event, getting to do all the cool stuff. And like that, it was gone. But wow. again, it was all my, it was my decision-making. I can't blame anyone. Did I do some bad, get involved with some shady 
uh, some shady people, sure. But that, again, mm -hmm. was my choice and my decision. Mm -hmm. And I was duped because I partied my discernment away. You know, one of the things I like about what you said there is that a lot of people, they don't take responsibility and own it mm -hmm. because we all make mistakes. And, you know, there's been a lot of mistakes I've made here on the air. And I just make a joke. I say, well, you know, good help's hard to find and laugh about it because uh, yeah. Charlotte, when we were on the original Zoom, <laughs> we had three guests on there. We, we were Zoom and Facebook Live during the pandemic because we has decided to uh, we're going to put on some messages of inspiration and hope during those dark days. I mean, we're all wondering about if we got enough toilet paper or whatever and all the other things about the pandemic. Because everybody was worried. We didn't know what was going on. And uh, three different times, here I am, you know, the host. I'm the guy that's got to push the buttons and everything. The guests are there. Fortunately, I had a lady by the name of Janie Sterling on, and she was a very experienced, uh, you know, MC and and she knew I had some problems. I got kicked off the show three times. <laughs> and it was, a, you know, it got to be a joke. It says, oh, Jim's gone again. Okay, Jim's back again. I said, yeah, they told me before the show I should put a pocket full of quarters, you know, I have quarters in my pocket full and keep putting them in there. And I didn't do it. You know, I'm a typical guy. I'm going to do it my way. And I'm <laughs> <blow it out. laughs> but you know it's when when things go wrong because i've seen people on stage when the uh their slides won't work it can rattle them and i remember one young lady we were down in orlando and i'd spoken and i was glad i spoke before she did she was that good this was her first time on stage now oh. And she was, she tried to use the clicker and one of them worked. And then after that, the second one worked or the third <laughs> one worked. And she has set the, the clicker down and she has says, that's okay. I'm better looking at those slides anyway. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and she drove on and see everybody loved it because everybody says, Hey, that could be me. I could uh -huh. be up there on stage and the technology can go haywire. Mm -hmm. And she didn't take it seriously. She just kind of like blew it off and boom, you know, and everybody <laughs> really appreciated it. <laughs> and I remember I, I told the guy standing there, I said, I'm glad I've already went. I hate to follow her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because when we were messaging back and forth, when you invited me to come on, I was mm -hmm. like, I don't, I, I wait for God to tell me what to talk about. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't, man. But to your point, my very first time being like having a book speaking gig, mm -hmm. I worked with a coach and I had notes and like all this <laughs> stuff. And I, and I thought, here I am, I'm going to give this perfectly timed speech and everything's going to be by the book. And anyway, I was about 15 seconds into it, realizing that I'm making the same mistake I made on my very first sales call when I moved to South Florida, which was I'm trying to script myself. And that it, the very first time I tried when I was in college working in healthcare, that bombed. Like, and the lady I was with, my supervisor, just let me bomb. I was like <laughs> stuttering, trying to communicate with these doctors and do the whole sales thing. And I'm stuttering, I'm sweating, I'm miserable. And she let me, she just let me die in front of this doctor. And as soon as we get out of the room, she she pulls me out and th this bright blue eyes, jet black hair, Italian from New York, is just poking me in the chest. Don't you ever embarrass me again <laughs> like that. Don't you do that crap. You speak from your heart. I mean, she's like hitting me oh. in the chest. So the second time in my life I ever tried to script anything that was not an acting job, which that's yeah. a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was on stage that day. And like it, I, it felt like three hours of me trying to like read, like go from these notes, and I was like, no. ah, screw it. I'm <laughs> just, I'm just gonna let it. I'm gonna speak from the heart." Oh yeah, I'll never ever again <laughs> go against just speaking from my heart ever. We had a vacancy, and so I shot him a, a message. And so, would you like to join us today? He said, yeah, sure, Jim, I'd love to. And I said, okay. So I shot him back and said, what's your title? And just give me like a little paragraph or so of your theme. And he answered me, he says, yikes, I don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, that's cool because we know you and all that. But see, you know, that's that's one of the things that I do because I interview, when you interview hundreds, of, well, hundreds, I've interviewed thousands oh, yeah. of people over the years. Oh. 
And, and one of the things that I have to educate some of the folks, maybe not educate, but explain to them would be better way for me to put it, is that when you come on a radio show or TV show or a podcast, if you're listening out there, please make note of this. It's not a sales webinar. That's right. Um, because no. no one picks up a remote on their TV and go, hey, let's find a good sales webinar. <laughs> you know? I mean, hey, so I was commercials as a kid. Does that count? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, those, those commercials oh. back in the 80s and 90s, they were good, weren't they? I mean, you oh. could see something, you know. And what was funny, <laughs> I didn't even know it was on planet Earth two minutes ago, but now you can't live without it. You have it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have it. You got Immediately, you're addicted to it or whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's it's really interesting because I tell people, you know, it's all about infotainment. People want to get to know you. People want to get to like you. Yeah. They want to know that you're just an average person that, you know, that you've made mistakes in your life. Your story mm -hmm. about your struggle and how you overcame that. That's that's the meat and potatoes right there. You know, that's they go, wow, if he can do it, I know I can do it or he he, he can help me get there, you know. Oh, my goodness. I just checked the messages here. And my sister, Linda Gold, says, hello. Glad I found you today, Jim Grant. Uh -oh. So now no I got two ladies on my case. Charlene <laughs> told me I got to behave myself. Now I got my sister watching. So if I'm missing an action tomorrow, you know what's going to happen. Okay? <laughs> see, see the stir up you called Joshua. <laughs> uh, I feel like that when my mom and my wife start talking, I get really nervous. Like, oh, no. I'm going to get in trouble Somehow, some way, <laughs> Joshua, uh, you might get a call. Me, hey, Joshua, this is Jim Grant, remember me? Yeah, uh, could you do me a big time favor? <laughs> call my sister. <laughs> yeah, if, would you fill in for me till I get out on good behavior? Because <laughs> one thing I've learned about life is that when the ladies in your life take the slack out of your chain, there's no wiggle room. No, sir. there's not even, even my daughter. And Charlene, I think I've told you this before. If she calls me dad, that's in her heart. If she says father, uh -oh. Oh, you know, uh, you're in trouble. I'm, I'm that far away from being in T rubble. <laughs> <laughs> She's already taken the slack out of the chain. There's no grace period here, so you might as well focus and do it right. <laughs> Well, make them proud today, Jim. <laughs> I will. But Joshua, own you've got a show here on E360 TV. Is that the right website I got up there? The yes, sir. Yeah, good that's, good that's our foundation website, and mm -hmm. uh, all of our content goes there. Mm -hmm. So I, I prefer that website over the the one that has my name on it. Okay, so, but thank you for changing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to show you how talented I was live yes, on the air. <laughs> Share with us a little bit about the Life Mana world, uh, Worldwide. So, Live Mana Worldwide uh, okay. originally came to me in a vision seven years ago. And when I was, I but I had everything that I saw in that vision. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'd, I'd never even held a microphone. But it's amazing how those visions become reality uh, once you just take action or you take that step in faith. But the Live Mono Worldwide Foundation, its early inception was what I created was really a revelation of what, of not waiting on God. Because I saw the vision, but I thought that when you see the vision, that meant you go now, <laughs> not that this is in the future. I didn't understand how that worked yet, at least for my personal visions. But uh, when COVID hit, because I had I'd, I'd shut that old company down, when COVID hit, I felt in my spirit, God say, go. And for whatever reason, I knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. So for us, for me, that meant now is the time to build what you were shown. And looking back at the years from that first vision till COVID, all of this time had gone on. And it was all this time that I was able to learn all of the ins and outs of the entertainment and media world. So the broadcasting side, the distribution side, the product placement side, the acting side, mm. every little function. Like when you go on a movie set mm. or your, a TV commercial, like when you watch a movie, most people just sit and watch the movie and go, wow, that's a good movie. Or they get engaged in the plot. I'm mm -hmm. looking at it going, 
there's money there, there's money there, there's money there, there's a job, there's a job, there's a job, there's a job, there's a job. because everything on a screen is monetizable. Mm-hmm. And, and then when people understand all the moving parts that it takes just to get somebody on the screen, you've got agents, you've got hair, you've got makeup. You, I mean, there's so and then all the brands, you've got the clever product placement, you've got all this stuff. I came into the industry through skincare. So mm-hmm. I, I came in through the eyes of product placement. Right. And right. realizing, and it shaped the vision for, it aligned with my beliefs. And I, I saw the Terminator when I was a kid and I go, oh my God, this is where we're going. Like we're <laughs> merging with machine. And, you know, back when the Terminator, Terminator came out, what, 84? Mm-hmm. I was six years old. So <laughs> I'm seeing this going, oh my God, this is the future. Saw Minority Report going, this is the future. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So ever all of this stuff and then all of the intellectual property of learning all things media and all the entertainment world, working with artists and managing and working with agents and being screwed over by agents, getting producing films and not getting paid for it, learning about the legal process of the business, all of those things, along with the ideology of, OK, well, eventually the robots are taking over. So <laughs> how does this work? Oh, OK. So now what you're going to do with this foundation because of where we're going is you're going to teach and equip the youth, all things media, so that they can stay ahead of the robots. Because if you are not, this is for everyone out there, if you are not becoming a walking media organization, you've got no future. Mm. And I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying that the only way that you can stay ahead of robots, AI, is you have to make yourself a brand. But just being a brand holding cute bottles is not going to get you anywhere. You have to be on TV. You have to have a podcast. You have to have a blog. You have Mm -hmm. to learn about product placement. You have to learn about your own value. Mm -hmm. And what you do and what we teach is we take all of the things that you're passionate about, all the things that you believe, and we build around that and you equip and you, and we basically set everybody up so that they can become a walking media organization. Because the days of Fox, the days of CNBC, the days of CNN being the dominant agency of the media organization, Mm -hmm. it's coming to an end. Yes. It's coming to an end. Celebrity is dead. The way that you know the Tom Cruises and the Nicole Kidmans of the world, those days are over. There will never be another Tom Cruise or another celebrity of that caliber again. What you're going to have is what they call the modern day celebrity, which is influencers, people that are doing good in the world, Mm -hmm. kingdom minded people, people that are serving. Celebrity is changing. The world of entertainment is changing. Media is changing where now basically you can run an entire media organization from your phone. You don't need a big headquarters. You don't need a big office. You don't need any of it. So our media organization, what we do is we're equipping the people that have been left behind Women that didn't want to give, you know, give up their bodies to get the part. Men that were told that they were too ugly or too fat and they weren't good enough. Or the people that were told, ah, you don't have a big enough following. Or the people that have criminal records like I do. That, you know, the people that have been convicts that can't get a job. That can't do anything better outside of maybe being a plumber. And there's nothing wrong with plumbers because we need plumbers. But you're not going in and getting a six-figure job when you're a convict. That's That's bullshit. Pardon my French, but it's bullshit because Mm -hmm. it's basically saying, well, the only way that you're going to be able to provide for your family is to become a convict again, to become a criminal. That's wrong because there's people like me out there that, you know what? I didn't like what happened to me as a kid. I don't look at any of the crap that happened to me and go, ah, this happened to me. I look at it like it happened for me, but here's the difference. I know that God's plans for me are amazing. I know that everything I've learned is actually meant to, to elevate other people. Like I know what success looks like. I also know what it's like to be homeless, Mm -hmm. but I know what it's like to be wealthy. But Mm. most people that grow up in, in broken homes that have records, they don't believe that they can do anything greater than working at Walmart. Guess what? There's nothing wrong with working at Walmart. I'm not making fun of that. But some of you out there have bigger dreams. But you've been told by the casting director that you're too Mm -hmm. fat. You're too ugly. You got a hair out of place. You're not whatever color. You're not this. You're not that. Well, with our media, what was on my heart to create and what we created was a platform and an organization that changed that. 
because I'm going to teach the same kids that don't have or the same adults that do not have the financial means to pay for a $20,000 course to learn all of this stuff. With our foundation, we're teaching it and giving it away. But the focus is the youth because without mm -hmm. the youth, what do we got? We yeah. need the youth to change the future. If we want to reverse this shit and go a better way, take a better mm -hmm. path, Mm -hmm. We need the youth, and the youth are a lot easier to heal than old people like me. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it really touches my heart the way you're saying that because uh, a lot of things that you're saying is that you're following your heart, and that's where the true energy is. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to us because when the pandemic hit, and I've shared this story several times before, so please bear with me, but when it hit, uh, Don McGrath and I, we got together with our executive training directors and uh, we were meeting with them. And Bill Heinrich says, we were going to talk about what we're going to, how we're going to handle the pandemic. We're going through the other stuff. Bill says, hey, we need to talk about the pandemic. We need to talk about it now. Okay, Bill. And we talked a little bit, maybe 30 seconds. And Bill just came up and says, hey, we know a lot of speakers. We're all confined to our houses. Okay, fine. We got Zoom. We got Facebook Live. Why don't we just put on, you know, a little show, a little webinar, call it Messages of Inspiration, Hope, and Support. That was the original name. And immediately, everybody bought into it because we're like, yes, this is it. I remember um, Tamara Hunter said she could do this, and uh, Sony Jackson said she could do that, and Preston said he could do this, and Don says I can do, he can do that. And then I'm sitting there and Don says, hey, Jim, I said, yeah, you can be the host. Oh, OK, I can do that. So we just came from the heart doing it. And after we rolled through 300 and some odd speakers on that, that's when Tamara Hunter says, hey, Jim, you need to take this to a bigger stage. Introduce me to Aaron Hymas. Aaron and I had a phone call and I fit right into without me knowing it right into the, the theme of what you're talking about. And so that, you know, I'd like to say that, you know, I figured that out on my own, but no, it did not happen that way. <laughs> when you get, when you come from the heart and the energy starts pulling you, the only thing you can do is take both hands and hang on because right. you're going forward. And, and, and that's when you know that, you know, that, you know, you're on the right path for you. Yeah, that's, and you know what? And you don't mind the struggles. And when you're aligned, when your heart is lined up with your skill set and your passion and and you're and you're pursuing it, you you tend not to care, at least in my experience, mm -hmm. you tend to overlook the, the the you're not getting there as fast or you're not seeing the monetary return that you desire. Like it becomes worth it. You look at failure as like, ah, there's another way, there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It really does, the more you know in your heart of who you are and what you were created to do, small stuff has zero, zero effect on you. It, even big stuff, because you're going, like I'll give you a prime example. I at, at the point right now is like, I know, like I can, I, I walk in faith because I know what that feels like. I know what that's like. I know that when I pray and I ask God for something big, like a world tour is a dream of mine in being able to create um, these little centers and put them like many studios, but it's also where our ministry is and being able to put them all over the world, London, Tokyo, Moscow, Russia, Miami, Florida, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, New York City, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Oklahoma City, Dallas, Texas. I already said Dallas, uh, San Diego, <laughs> London, Sydney, Australia, all of those places. Like uh, we have this vision to do that. And mm -hmm. I know that every time I pray for something, that there's going to be a giant put right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Those Absolutely. Giants, what used to feel like, oh, well, God doesn't want me to do this. Or it used to feel like, oh, God, another failure. What it used to be, now I started to recognize it's not the devil or the enemy or some made up thing being put in front of me. No, God's allowing that obstacle because I get to face it. Typically, it's something from my past, something that maybe it's an area I get to mature, but that obstacle is there. But I know that I am guaranteed to overcome that obstacle because mm -hmm. I was created to overcome those obstacles. All of us are. 
Love it. You'll never Love move it. up the mountain until you go right through it. You can't go around it. You got to go through it. You got to face it. You got to deal. You got to bite the bullet. Maybe it's honesty. Maybe it's forgiveness. Maybe it's letting go of resentment. I don't know what it is for you, but you can count on that giant getting in front of you. But you are meant to slay those dragons, baby. You're absolutely <laughs> meant to. And you will never. And here's the other reason. The other reason why you don't want to go around it is because for every new level that you go in life, you better expect a new devil waiting on you. Oh, yeah. There's new challenges. There's new obstacles. There's new hardships. You're meant to overcome those two, mm-hmm. but you got to overcome this one before you can get to the next one. Yeah. You know, Charlene, I just put up Bill's uh, book there, his free ebook on clarity. You just go to myfreebook.me and it's a free ebook because what Bill talks about, Bill Heinrich, the author of The Seven Levels of Truth, he talks about no matter where you are, what's going on in your life, right now, you're at the perfect place for you. Mm-hmm. Just get out of the physical. Just let it go. So true. Focus on loving yourself first, loving others, and game over. I mean, I, I did a short, short version there, but it's a book on clarity. Clarity has no story. Just go to myfreebook.me. M is in Mike, E is in Echo. And I need to put your website back up there again, my man. And there we go. There we go. <clears throat> But I tell you, Charlene, I tell you right now, he is really hitting a nail on the head, isn't he? Yes, definitely. I, I, you're absolutely right about those giants. Once you decide, but when it's your passion and you know that it's what you're supposed to do, you know you're not going to give up no matter what. So it's you, you learn to expect it and you grow so much because you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to find a way to get through it. You know? Oh, and it, yeah. And it's not like I don't get frustrated. I got... Didn't, I got <laughs> I made the final round for to sign with an, an international agency, and I was uh-huh. to find out this week, like w- when we have that final meeting, they just decided they weren't going to call at all. And I, I thought, here it is, I've got this gig. Well, I found out through the grapevine that I didn't get the part because I'm too white. Oh. I don't have an issue with that. Like whatever. I was disappointed because I'm like, oh, here it goes. Like here's here here's. This is how I get to do the world tour. Wow. And I found out that, no, I didn't get it. And here's the thing. I was upset because who doesn't want an international contract, like an international <laughs> agency that's going to send me all over the world? Of course I wanted to do that. <laughs> I've been practicing my whole life for this. I didn't get it. And yeah, I, it, took me about, it took me about 30 minutes yesterday. And I was like, oh, come on, man. Like <laughs> another one? And then God quickly reminded me, like, how many times have we been here, dude? Every time you don't get something, the next thing that's offered to you is five times bigger than what I have. Mm-hmm. Like, I've got something better for you. There's a reason why this is no. And I, and it, but it took me about 30 minutes to realize that. And then I was able to let it go. But it really, at first, it rocked me. And we're allowed that. We're human. Yeah. We're going to handle everything perfect. Yeah. I mean, I am a, I'm an evangelist, but you know what? Doesn't mean I don't want to bite people's faces off sometimes. <laughs> I'm a human. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. It, it was, we're human. Mm-hmm. We're human. Yes. The mistakes we make, we don't bathe in them. We don't stay in it. We don't stay mm-hmm. in our, our pity and sorrow. Like we get to move on. But we need to feel yeah. it. I like the way you say that. We do yeah. need to not deny it. We need to feel it. And mm-hmm. and it is true. Yeah. Who wouldn't be angry? But then getting that positivity back of knowing, oh, I didn't get this because I'm going to get something better. And you will. Yeah. That's and right. You will. That's, that's like me and the Tamra Blanket Ship. We wanted to start a radio show and, you know, just go from there. This was back in 2019. And we never could get the energy behind it. We just, you know, it was a good idea. It's still a great idea. We may take it and put it on another show, but but we just, you know, we couldn't get it going. And we didn't know why. Everything we tried just, just you know, slipped away. It never had any traction at all. Mm-hmm. And so I just told her, let's put it on hold. But little did we know that this pandemic was coming. We were going to start these messages on the 
Facebook Live and all that stuff. And then we're going to get, you know, invited to go to E360 TV and get broadcasted to, you know, millions of devices around the world have the opportunity to be on their devices. I'll say that. And when the opportunity came, the door opened for Tamara and I to have the Everyday People Show on Friday. And I thought, well, here we were, you know, trying to you know, push a chain uphill and we fell into this thing. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. And the main thing is that another thing I like to share with people, if I may, right quickly, is that many times in our life, you think about it, all of us can relate to this. There was something we really wanted. It could be, you know, whatever it might be, because you know some things that you really wanted, things that I really wanted. And then you go down the, the pathway of life and you look in your rearview mirror because your mind can only bring up your the past. It can't bring up the future. It's not a crystal ball. That's why you need to come in the heart. OK, but you look in your rearview mirror and you go, thank you, sweet Jesus. I did not get that. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, but at the time, you know, oh, we just can't live without it. We just, oh my goodness, if this doesn't come come through for me, I'm just going to be upset, devastated, or whatever. But yeah. you feel like, ooh, I'm glad I I'm glad I missed that curve. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, it's true. I mean, I I've had well, I've mentioned earlier about there was I didn't go into the details of it, but I mentioned about raising money for some films and producing. Right. Well, I didn't get paid. And I needed the money. I mean, I just homeless. Like, I I need the money, God. Come on. (laughs) But looking back, if I would have, you know, brokered that oil deal and it actually gone through, uh, or brokered the, you know, the I I did broker the films. But if I would have got paid, I would have been back doing month long meth binges and all that other crap that wrecked my life. Because I would have all of a sudden I wasn't spiritually mature enough. I hadn't learned about obedience. I hadn't learned about being a good steward yet. Mm-hmm. I had learned all my lessons. And guess what? <laughs> I know for a fact I'd be dead. I yeah. know for a fact. So like, I can actually go, thank you, God, for not giving me those millions of dollars back then. I'm ready <laughs> to receive those millions of dollars now. Yeah. Uh, years ago, I yeah. promise you I wasn't. You know? So, yeah, it's easy I trusting, letting go and surrendering and trusting that the manufacturer of our lives, the person that designed us, that created us, the one that has the blueprint that gave us the purpose that we have to, to think that we know better than the manufacturer is the yes. most asinine comment of all time. Oh, it's insane. <laughs> it really is. And, and you'll get a kick out of this. When you, you said something earlier, it thought came to my mind about, you know, even though you're an evangelist, you still feel like biting people's faces or something like that. Very much so. <laughs> and uh, I heard a, a good friend of mine, he's an evangelist, and uh, he says, you know, you, you got to hope and pray that everybody goes to heaven. Let's be honest. You got You just got to do that. But also, too, <laughs> you hope and pray that the Lord in his infinite wisdom will put some of them way over on the other side somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd get a kick out of that, my man. I, I do. I feel like that. It's, you know, being, because again, like I'm all about, it, I, I'm trying to balance this thing out of, of, of what it is to be love and to represent love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the same time, like I know that the most loving thing that we can do is be honest. That's like, true. Be, that's being that. ourselves. It's speaking the truth. Like, I don't believe that that anything outside of truth will ever be blessed. So I mm-hmm. believe, and the truth is also one of the most difficult things to practice. Like, because most people will a, a white lie here, a white lie there, and we don't think much about it. And, you know, maybe for you, it's not affecting you. But for me, I lived this dark life where my double life had a double life. And, mm-hmm. and I didn't learn any of that. I, I didn't, I, I was a, again, a liar and a manipulator and I hid. So when I learned just how supernatural truth is in our mm-hmm. life, it changed everything for me. And, and, but the thing that's tough though, is that sometimes people don't have the ears to hear the truth. Mm-hmm. And I think that why we are in the situation in the world is that we've we live in a world full of disinformation. Mm-hmm. We've been 
They've been trying to separate us from truth since the beginning. We've been victims of propaganda. I mean, I wasn't alive during Vietnam, but I know that propaganda was being used it during oh. Vietnam. Oh, yeah. World War II propaganda was being used. Propaganda is used on us every single day. So we are so far separated from truth that we are at each other's throats. And yet the only way that we're going to heal is if, if this biblical promise comes true that everything that's hidden will be uncovered. Oh, yeah, it and, will. And, and, and so part of our mission with Gratitude Unfiltered, Gratitude Unfiltered, my talk show, was born out of a month, a month long meth binge. I was on oh. a street going. All, I was getting ready to re up after four days. It would have been my death because no one can stay awake longer than four days and, and survive. I'm sorry, because I, I, I would have been dead. But God intervened and stopped me. God came in and said, I'm not done with you yet. I'm not letting you go. This is going to suck, but I am not letting you go. I want yeah. you to put a spotlight on your shadow world. You have mm -hmm. you do not have the luxury of secrets anymore. You're going to live with a spotlight on your shadow world, and you're going to live in truth. You know, the thing I like about what you're saying there, you know, Joshua, is the fact that, and Charlene, I know you can appreciate this too. Yes. There's people out there listening It says, wow. This guy has the courage to be honest. This guy has the courage to say the things that, you know, I kind of keep hidden. And maybe that will enable them to take that one step forward in the right direction. And I know, Charlene, you probably had, I know you had some dark days in your life. I mean, not with drugs, but, you know, the things you went through and all. Yeah. And that took a lot of courage for you to step out and just say, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a victim here. I'm not ashamed of what happened to me because it, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, just how you can say it better than I can. So go ahead, please. <laughs> well, just as far as um, the incest, you know, mm -hmm. it happened to me by my father and it mm -hmm. wasn't my fault. It wasn't right. something for me to own, but growing up like that, it's so hard to, understand there's so much hurt and you you blame it on yourself for so many years until you get to the point where you have to face that responsibility of looking at what really happened I think, the truth yeah. that mm -hmm. wasn't your fault and and walking mm -hmm. through that journey uh, yeah i just like when we when we're broadcasting then, here every now and then our, our voice may drag a little bit but it's not our fault we you know we just <laughs> AI, man. <laughs> yeah. but, but that's, it's that's but then it's also. <laughs> yeah. But see, you guys, you know, sharing something like that, and I hope it just reaches out and gives someone that's the courage to say, "Okay, I can take this one step, and I can be, I can go forward, and I can simply say, you know, I'm going to just be true to myself, true to everyone else." And I'm not going to let the past have any reins or any chokehold around my neck. Amen. That's, just take that's that when responsibility you, for what you did do. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, listen, mm -hmm. I, 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 I want to, I, the, the, I'm so glad that you brought this up. And Charlene, I'm sorry that you, what you went through, because it's robbing a child's innocence. Like, I, the, I understand the consequences of that. Um, yeah. And I also, but I also understand the consequences of not having a voice. I mean, I was trained, you know, we don't talk about that because, you know, yes. and what they'll think. We don't talk about that because of what people at the country club are going to say. We don't talk about that. Like, mm -hmm. we, we, people need to know that everything's okay, mm -hmm. but it's not okay. But then, so you, when you learn to keep secrets yeah. to a child, that's your doom. But what I didn't know about truth was, like, with me... I was holding other people prisoner with my lies mm. or the secrets that we kept. Like my, my ex, uh, you know, we had this double life together and mm -hmm. she was harboring so many of my secrets. And like, uh, for instance, I've been, I've been in jail six times. Two of the times were for domestic violence. We went to jail together two different times. Mm -hmm. And the sixth, wow. I turned my life around but she was harboring that secret because she was trying to protect me.
but in all actuality, she was enabling me. The talking about having HIV, and when I was hiding that from, because I didn't want the public backlash from it. What mm -hmm. I didn't know was those secrets that I was keeping were actually my gift to the world. Yes. <laughs> because I can now sit in front of women who have been battered and abused. And I look, I was abused too, but I became the abuser. And so I love being able to have that conversation of, in creating the space to have that conversation because not everybody gets to confront their abuser in a controlled, safe way. I don't mind being that person to have those conversations because I'm going to be honest about it. Or even better, I, because I didn't talk about being molested by two men, I hid the, my part of my double life was cheating on my wives with men and doing drugs, going and having sex with men. Like I struggled. This was a real battle for me because I didn't know what was real. But hiding it did no good. It was only when I confessed and I was open about everything and I shared my full testimony publicly that everything began to change. Because here's the thing. Secrets can be used against you. Yes. You know what can't? Truth. Exactly. You and you reveal the things that you've been hiding, that means you've taken everyone's bullets away. So if you have shame around things you've done, the most empowering thing you can do is share it and share it with as many people as possible. Because here that is your mm -hmm. act of surrender of trusting that God is going to do something good with it. Now to that life, that's on you. There, then you deserve the consequences. And there are con yeah. consequences for our actions. There but are. You confess it. And the sooner you confess it, that means the sooner God can get his hands on it and do something productive with it. Mm, absolutely. I, I like the way you put that because I never thought about that, but it's very, very true. You know, if if, uh, if, if people know your secrets, they can hold a gun to your head, kind of. And right I was thinking now. about, I was, I was thinking about all of these people that we see on uh, TV that think they're important, and when something happens, they go into damage control. They try to, you know, bury it deeper, <laughs> and <laughs> they don't realize, with more yeah, and they don't really realize in the process they they enslave themselves. So I was going to say they put chains on themselves. If yeah, they do. yeah, uh -huh. that's very true. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, very true. And it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. oh. You know, you know, what I like about this particular show here is that it's kind of like a little mini mastermind. You, you everybody shares <laughs> their ideas, and and it's amazing how you know things come alive. The truth does, and that's important for you out there that you're watching because if it doesn't matter what you're wanting to do in life, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a solopreneur, as they call them, whatever. You've got to be able to be associated with like-minded people who have the same type of heart that you do. People that will help you and you be willing to help them and form a little coalition and go and grow with that because that is extremely powerful. And the mastermind that you will get and create, oh, goodness, that's going to just, <laughs> that's going to save you, a, you know, a, heart, a boatload of heartaches. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's very true. I got to get back here and put your website up. I've been playing around with all these keys here, and you know, I'm a I'm a gadget kind of a guy. If, if there's something there, I'll I'll push it and see what happens. <laughs> it looks I just hope, good. I just hope I don't push the ejection button on this seat here. <laughs> I, um, I I love what you're doing with E360, and uh, you've been a great addition to the network. I just well, thank you. I, you know, of course, I get to see things behind the scenes. So I, I love, I love the content you create. I love the value that you're bringing to the network um, and the wisdom. And it's just, it's that, and it's just great content. So I know that Aaron. I don't speak for Aaron, but I do know that Aaron appreciates you very much, and uh, you've been an asset uh, from, you know, from my point of view as well. I mean, I enjoy our, their very first time we talked. I really enjoyed our conversation and I love, I love what you do, man. Well, thank you, sir. Same here. And of course, uh, like I told Aaron, I'm kind of a team player, you know, I like to, you know, be, be a productive member of the team. And uh, I know Charlene does too. In fact, I asked her, I said, would you help me with my commercials? Oh, I'd love to. 
And then I'd ask, and I'd asked her, I said, uh, Charlene, on your days off, because she's also, she works for Extra Airline. Is that the name of them now? Extra, they change it yet? They changed it to Avello. Avello, yeah. Avello Airways. Avello, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, just chartered airlines. And, you know, and, and you know, she was so kind. She told me if I ever needed a you know, plane ride, they had a special seat for me where nobody would bother me. She says, it's a folding chair, and we put it right on the wing just for you, Jim. <laughs> All the fresh air you need, brother. <laughs> <laughs> But when I asked her if she'd like to co-host with me, you know, to you know, and she's she says yes, I just love to. That's and great yes, oh yeah, absolutely, I'm blessed. I mean, and she's uh, prettier than you. Oh, I know it. I know it. I know Beauty it. Yeah. yeah, and she tells me to behave, you know, and she there's an invisible chain underneath the camera there and when i get out of line she'll yank it and that's my cue to behave myself so you know it gets yanked it gets yanked two or three times during the show you know no big <laughs> my wife is not my co-host but when she watches the broadcast if i'm mm -hmm. about to go to some place that i'm not supposed to she'll go and she'll just look at me <laughs> i'm like <coughs> So but typically she doesn't mess with me. Like I, she lets me talk about what I feel led to mm -hmm. unless I start talking about politics and then uh, like, no, <laughs> can't, no, we can't. Yeah. <laughs> don't. Opinions about politicians are not good. So yeah. <laughs> the, way I, the way I look at them is that, that they've, they don't need any of, of our broadcast time because we're about everything that they're not. Ah, well, you know what? Now that you say that, I can't even argue with that. I'm just going to, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but Charlene, I tell you, it, you know, you you really blew me away because uh, I did not know that you knew, Joshua, and you you mentioned something about a book. Would you share that with us, please, before we, before we go? Um, yes, I wrote an anthology. It's called I Fly, and it's about stories about people who overcome adversity. So it's uh, it was published last year, and Brett Scott, who also knows Joshua, uh, was a co-author in it with me. So it's a, I put my story of surviving sexual trauma, my chapter's called Breaking the Chains. So when we, we talked about that, I just really felt like when you grow up with such a heavy burden on you and you go out into the world, you're not equipped to make decisions. And boy, mm -hmm. you just fall all over the place. And then you got to go back and you got to go back to the beginning, but pick up mm -hmm. all those pieces. So I put a piece of my story um, in that book. So it is called I Fly and uh, it was connected to Brett. So when I saw Brett, I knew who Joshua was. So, oh, yeah. awesome. it's, it's such a small world. And that, that's a good example of when you're connected with the right people, that connection just seems to just grow and grow and grow. And it's kind of like you get a, you get a flashlight that's got two D cell batteries in it. You turn it on, it's going to be so bright. And you think, well, I need a brighter light at night. So you get a longer sleeve and you put more batteries in there. And what happens to the light? It gets brighter. And that's the same thing that happens with our minds. And I'm living proof of that because I've been the dumbest guy in the room and they make me sound intelligent, you know? <laughs> you got a good radio voice. Well, thank you, sir. Good. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that must be what gets me by. <laughs> hey, it does help. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, we're we're getting pretty close to time, right at fifty nine minutes. So I better, you know, we better wrap it up. But uh, Joshua, I just want to give you a, little, a few seconds here to say any parting words, anything you like, and I'll give Charlene the chance, and then we'll sign off. Forgive. Mm. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <To> forgive. <laughs> yeah. That, that I literally, you can take that any direction that you, the, anything that, any direction your spirit wants to take that, forgive. And I can just see it in your face. That's just, re, you know, relief. I, I love that. I, this was a great show today. I really enjoyed it. Joshua, you're, authenticity is just amazing really mm -hmm. enjoyed our time together i i had a great time too i really enjoyed yeah. this and i'm i'm truly grateful you guys had me on thank you well thank you and most importantly ladies and gentlemen you know that i just kept putting up the uh our sponsor six minute webinar because i didn't know i did not want to break the energy the flow of energy for a commercial 
But do go to the six minute webinar dot com. And it's a it's a great way of getting your message out to your ideal customer in six minutes or less. It's that good. And Joshua, thank you again. Charlene, it's always a pleasure to host the show with you. And um, I just I love everything about you, what you bring to the show and all your personality and your insight and things like that. And besides that, not only does she make me look good, she makes me sound good because she's the intelligent one. <laughs> <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> thank you, Jim. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, for the day, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. We know that there was a lot of great information shared today on the show, so be sure and share this show with others. It's going to be downloaded tonight and up uploaded tonight. <laughs> you got to download and then upload it. Just go to YouTube, Messages of Inspiration and Hope, or you can go to e360tv.com, scroll down to Positive Vibrations, then to the right you'll see Messages of Inspiration and Hope, and it will be right there. So thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.